kind of left. And as Andy mentioned, as time got by, we started to improve the, we started to improve the cattle with different breeds, bringing different breeds in. Most of the old timers that I've ever talked to said most of the cattle would have been a solid red, a solid black, and maybe some of those blue roans, right, Andy? Right, right. And uh, right. they were more solid colored. But as time goes by and we interject other breeds, color patterns start coming out. And I hate to call it the novice, folks like the color. So you'll, they would start breeding different colors just for the color patterns and coats. So as you mentioned, these cattle actually, would you, as any I was discussing, they, we, the first set of cattle that we purchased for the ranch came from a man by the name of John Wright uh, out of Arcadia, which he had purchased his cattle from the uh, Mr. Bass or Gurn, right, right. Uh, and that's how, and we have them on our ranch for history, uh, and they are the most photographed cattle we have on the ranch, uh, and every picture we have now will be one of these cracker cattle. So not the ones that made the money. Yeah. <laughs> A man by the name of John Light uh, out of Arcadia, which he had purchased his cattle from the uh, Mr. Bass or Dirt on the right. Uh, and that's how, and we have them on our ranch for history, uh, and they are the most photographed cattle we have on the ranch. Uh, and every picture we have now will be one of these cracker cattle. They're not the ones that made the money. Yeah. <laughs> these cattle will be a little nervous, and like I said, this is a first time in town. So we're going, like I said, we're going to attempt to try to take them out of the gate. Uh, if our dogs are kind of working, they may hold them up a little bit. We're probably not going to pressure them too hard because they're in a new spot. And we don't want to spend all night gathering them out there. Unless Paul will let us bring a bull back and we just take them five up here. We'll come back in five years and gather them all. We purchased them from, and it was they uh, had a cattle drive back in 1995. And uh, she was the original cow that first ever on the cattle drive. We sold it back to that man because he was a liker. So she would have been uh, 21 years old. Uh, you know, not very good for producing, you know, as far as having calves, uh, 12, 13 years. Some of these cows, and if you don't push them hard, They'll live on up to 25, 26, 27 years old. They have names. My aunt has a cattle ranch. No, none of them. They're in the cows. Well, they got names. We run about 5,000 head on Buck Island Ranch. So uh, they're, they're more numbers. <laughs> they have numbers. So. Yes, sir. Um, is your horses, uh, are they still carrying the lines of when the horses were first found down here back in the 1800s or whatever, but I know in a book I read that everybody was always wanted that kind of horse that they found here when, what, the Spanish left when they left, that, that left the horses when they left. Same thing, cracker horses, right. they are smaller. Uh, my son's horse, Buck, there, he is a half cracker. Okay. He's a half cracker, a uh, half quarter horse. Okay. And, uh, and they are a very durable horse, but they're yeah. a little smaller. So if, if we have to rope something, a little horse, we could rope that there, but we couldn't rope that. Well, today, that, you know, 18, 1900 pounds, he's going to drag you, drag you to town. Yeah. So some of our horses are still, I have some friends that that's all they have is cracker horses, but they still cross breed a little bit to get a little size. Into it. They're very hardy, just like the Mustang. You know, they're a very hardy horse. They've had to live out here in this. Uh, yeah. So very, very hardy. Yes, sir. Thank you. When does a bull get too big to own where it's, it's just not manageable anymore? Does it ever happen? Or? No, no. Uh, you know, a bull's life expectancy uh, really and truly five to six years of age if you're bringing him in from another place, say from out west or something for the genetics. A bull we raise here might last two or three more years because he's conditioned. He doesn't have to go through an acclimation phase like he would coming from another state. And he's just we're hot. We're very hot. Uh, and if it draws blood like a mosquito, a tick, a midge, a mite, 
Uh, it's here in Florida, uh, yeah. especially in the summertime. As Andy mentioned, I can remember in 1996 when I first come, 93 when I first come. In 96 we got extremely wet, and we would literally have to ride across the pasture, put our slicker on, a raincoat on, and a handkerchief just to keep them so you wouldn't breathe in mosquitoes. But we don't see mosquitoes like that uh, much anymore. No, not like that. Been 25 years ago, but back in Eddie's day now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they were bad. If you, we like to joke a lot too. We, we like to pick, pick, we pick a lot of fun. So. Pick a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta be pretty thick hiding. No, no, not not at all. Uh, and then of course like a horse it, it, that would affect a horse probably more because we back on the on the Nile. The Buckhole Ranch is for Yeah. 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 Uh we're probably ranking the top ten. Yeah, the top top ten to twenty. This is Hillary Slade. She's the director of the Earth Called Biological Station. She's my boss. <laughs> she does run Buck Island Ranch. Right. She, she's a big chief. Jean runs Buck Island Ranch. I sign the checks. <laughs> <laughs> the pen is mightier than the sword. <laughs> so a little history about Buck Island Ranch, if you don't mind. Uh, Buck Island Ranch was owned by John D. MacArthur, uh, insurance man, Paul Beaton County. And, uh, Upon his death, he had set up a large foundation, and uh, they were not sure what they wanted to do to the ranch. And Archibald Biological Station is another family-owned private uh, entity. Uh, so in 1988, they embarked on a partnership to lease the, Archibald leased the ranch to look at long-term ecological research on the ranch, looking at the agricultural operation, the natural surroundings. And then I'm going to turn it over to Hillary from there. Thank you. <laughs> So it's um, Archibald's an ecological research centre and conservation and education and it's been a fantastic experience for us for the last nearly 30 years to run a working cattle ranch because we've learned not only do we really understand the ranch like an ecosystem, we learn we know all the species out there, we know about nutrient cycles and water and carbon but we also have a big dose of reality about the finances. There's a big commercial ranch we know what it takes to stay, you know, to stay uh, financially viable. So it's a wonderful opportunity for us to provide a bridge between scientists and ecologists, people interested in conservation, people in the industry, and then universities and academics. So it's been a real privilege for us to, to run a ranch. And I have to say it's been a humbling experience because it's very tough. To make a living you might own tens of thousands of acres but it's tough to make a living from working cattle ranches and these are some of the last great places in florida these working ranches you're the ones that surround here you know these are the open spaces that provide a lot of habitat for our remaining species so archibald's really interested in not just can we understand the ranch and how it works and how we can manage it better to sort of protect the environment but also how can we work with ranchers so that they stay out on this landscape and uh, the goal is not to turn it into Walmarts and subdivisions but to keep working cattle ranches as part of the heart of Florida. So it's been a wonderful experience and we've really appreciated the opportunity to do it. I think Jean's learned a lot from us and we've learned a lot <laughs> from the cowboys so it's been a, a good interchange. So, um, we've got some information, so maybe when they're finished and wanted to blow all over, but if some of you are interested, we've got a, uh, information about Buck Island Ranch, we'd be happy to share. And we're so delighted to have this state park down the road, because, you know, this is a sort of wonderful example of the, the original habitat here, and it acts, you know, it helps us understand what was here historically. You know, it's modified a lot on a working cattle ranch, but right. it gives us that little glimpse into the past to understand where we came from and where we are now. So it's really nice to have both parts of that in the landscape. Mm -hmm. Some 
I heard him mention about somebody coming out and taking pictures of your cows and stuff. Do you have? Is the ranch open for like field trips? We have um, a buggy tour, um, which you can book. It's not like a state park. You know, people come up and they say, I left a message an hour ago and nobody's called me back. <laughs> so we're a bunch of scientists and we offer buggy tours. And uh, people can get a group together, like at least 10 or 15. Um, and there is information about our buggy tour. We will take people out and you'll learn about our research programs. But what we don't have is a regular scheduled thing every Friday morning. I was thinking more like a classroom. Like I teach Florida Studies and yes. I also we, teach yeah. ecosystems. We do do school he, groups you know. and we have summer camps that come out there. So if we can, we just try and fit it in. And um, people just have to understand we're not a state park, so we're yeah. doing our best. But we, we really appreciate people coming out and learning about the ranch. Yeah. And I'll be happy when the, when we finish our before, I'll be happy to share it. Paul, anything else? I think you want to read something? Well, I was going to wait till then. My name okay. is Daniel Willis. I'm the park manager here at Kissimmee Prairie. And I want to say thank you to all of our partners, uh, Archibald, uh, St. John's Water Management, and especially the friends at Kissimmee Prairie, uh, because we are a staff of very few people, and without our cooperators and partnerships, uh, we wouldn't be able to do all these great things that we're doing. Uh, so, you know, thank you guys for coming out today and supporting us and supporting everybody here that makes this happen. Um, at the end, uh, when these guys finish up with their, I'm going to do a reading from a, a book called Land Remembered. I've got three short readings talking about very, uh, I don't know, important parts of the prairie. Uh, Patrick D. Smith actually lived in the bunkhouse uh, for a period of time. Uh, the old cowboy uh, homestead where the corrals used to be, right behind the office and wrote this book and it's a it's a historical fiction um, but it was set pretty much here uh, about the cattle industry and uh, three generations of family that came down from Georgia and uh, ended up you know in a, a free Florida without fences and roads and then ended up in the end you'll read uh, about becoming uh, real estate moguls so, <laughs> so. All right. Uh, excuse me. Just, I, I think, Angel, today we just went about, about halfway down that fence, back this way. So, if, then, if you follow me, and then yeah. um, we're going to get Andy, everybody a little bit away from this area because we don't want any issues. Yeah, yeah, so it's it's so, Watch the me, fence, yeah, yeah, it's snagged a couple people. Yeah. Well, it's on you. I am. I am. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Please. Thank you. 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 Mike, 
shifted them back around the road. Get them turned. Try to get him to go around the other end. So we let the cracker cows out. They immediately ran. And so these guys went out and caught them and they bring them back. I hope I got a couple of good shots out of there. <laughs> it's so bright, I can't see.
I guess it's safe for everybody to walk back there. You watched a real cow demonstration and you didn't see the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you just all walk back down the road, that would be great. Okay. Okay. Thank you.